on, so it's time for September favourites. Now I had a really, really good month. I love September, I love autumn, if you can't already tell from my makeup, I'm feeling the autumnal vibes. And also it was my birthday, which is always really, really fun. So I had a great month and I feel like I'm back into the swing of experimenting with makeup again and trying new things. And I have some real solid favourites to show you this month. So I'm gonna get started with a shower gel. Now I was never really bothered about shower gel. I'll just use whatever Mark had, like, Dove for men in shower fresh. Yep, that's fine, that'll do for me. But I was in the supermarket and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna treat myself. I'm gonna give something new a go and I saw this from Carez and it is the Santorini Vine Shower Gel. Now, I picked this up mainly because it's my dream to go to Santorini, like one day it just has to happen. And also when I smelt it, it smells of fruity, citrusy, and a little bit woody goodness. And I gave it to my sister and I was like, smell this, what does it smell of? To me, it smells glorious. She said that it smells of fruit pastel ice lollies. It smells like the taste of fruit pastel ice lollies, if you know what I mean. But it's really, really incredible. I don't think I'd pick it up every time because it is quite pricey for a shower gel. I think it's around eight pounds, which is semi-ridiculous. So I think when I fancy a bit of a treat and I don't use Mark's Dove for Men, I will give this a go again. But if you want something a little bit more luxurious in your shower time, then give this one a go. Now for new items to penetrate into the skincare routine, that is a big deal because I have very solid favorites that I just go on time and time again, a lot of products that I repurchase. But I found two favorites this month that I just think are absolutely awesome. I've incorporated in, I've used them most days and I will definitely repurchase them when they're out. This Pixie by Petra Hydrating Milky Mist with Hyaluronic Acid and Black Oat is my new favourite spray whenever you need a bit of moisture. I always put things next to my desk, like a little desk time beauty stash and never end up really using them. But this time around I've got my By Terry Bomb de Rose sitting there and then this. And I easily spray it around five times a day. And the reason why I like it is because it adds hydration to my face but without disrupting any makeup I've got on or without leaving that kind of like tacky feeling. You know sometimes you use a spritz and then as it dries down you're like, oh I feel slightly tacky. I'm not quite sure how I feel about this. This to me is like an invisible layer of moisturizer that you put on, just sinks in instantly and makes your skin feel like, ah, thank you so much, you've given me a drink. Also the spritz on this is very fine, like I'll, I'll show you now. Ah. It's not one of those squirting your face thing, you really have to like mentally prepare yourself for it, one's like a Tata Harper spray, which I love, but it's very intense. So a big thumbs up for this. And another thing that I think is brand new that I've been trying is from Ren, the Wake Wonderful Nighttime Facial. If you're interested in a full review on this, then let me know because I will do that because off the top of my head, I can't remember what the ingredients list looks like, but I've got a feeling it's got some kind of AHA in there, it's got some kind of acids. I think it's got glycolic in it, but for me, I really struggle with things that have got like a high level of acid in just because I'm quite sensitive and it tends to make me feel like a bit red and aggravated but this is extremely gentle. It definitely doesn't have the best scent when you put it on it's like oh putting vinegar on your face but when I wake up in the morning my skin is so soft and just feels a bit more like refined a little bit smoother. My pores don't seem as noticeable and even on days when I'm not using this all over my face I take a little bit and put it on any blemishes that I've got and it tends to just deal with them very quickly. Quickly. I use this as the last step of my skincare routine, so I will do makeup remover, cleanser, toner, eye cream, serum, then just stick this on. Won't add anything else on top and it provides enough hydration. I definitely don't like wake up feeling super dry or anything like that. And I tend to use it every other night or every three nights. I'm firmly back on the makeup wearing bandwagon after months of DIY and just wearing my hair in a pineapple, not really wearing that much. So there's quite a lot of makeup favorites this month. And the first one is from Hourglass, and this is their ambient lighting palette. And in it, it has dim light, incandescent light, and radiant light. I've got a feeling that radiant light and dim light are in their like permanent range, and then incandescent was a limited edition and only available in this palette. I think. This palette is still available, they still sell it as part of their lineup. And I saw Lily using it a lot when we were in Germany, and she was kind of obsessed with just using dim light to set her makeup. So when I came back, cracked this out, can completely see why she was using it every single day. It is a fab setting powder. It's one of those setting powders that you can just put all over your face, and probably no one else would know that you've done anything different or that you've got that on your face. 
but you can tell that you've done something different to your face. It's a really difficult one to describe, but I highly recommend giving dim light a go and swatching it in store. I don't tend to use radiant light a lot unless I've got quite a lot of bronzer on or a bit of fake tan. I use that as like a highlight on the top of my cheeks. Incandescent light though, I do tend to use as a highlighter. So for me, this is like my highlighter slash setting powder palette is all I've had for that in my makeup bag for this past month. For bronzer, I am obsessed with this. I finally got around to using it. I picked this up in my Sephora haul probably around a month or two ago now. It's from Makeup Forever and it is their Pro Bronze Fusion in the shade 20 M and it's got these like little ripples across the front. It certainly looks really pretty in the palette, but the shade of this is just perfect for me. It's not too muddy, it's not too orange, it's not too red toned, it's not too green, and it is very, very sheer, which I really like in a bronzer, just because then it's impossible to go too over the top with. Sometimes I find the Nars Laguna is a bit like, whoa, when you apply it. But this I just take on like a MAC 187 brush, give it a little dust in, and just put it really lightly over my cheeks, kind of over my temple. And it's been a really nice bronzer to use while well. I haven't been particularly tanned. I'm on a bit of a journey of mascara rediscovery at the moment. You guys know that I love the L'Oreal Telescopic Waterproof one, really enjoy Fairy Drop Scandal Queen, also like the Heroin Make ones. But a lovely viewer gave me this when we were in Germany, and it is from the brand Catrice, which I think is like a German drugstore brand. And she said it's like their version of the L'Oreal Telescopic Waterproof one. It's the Glam and Dole Volume Mascara Waterproof. And thank you so much because it is absolutely awesome. I've been using it all month. It's got one of those like rubberized kind of silicony tips with really, really, really tiny, tiny bristles on. And I find that it holds a curl amazingly and just provides exactly the right ratio of like lengthening to volumizing. It just makes my lashes look really big and like, hello, I'm here, which I think my other mascara choices have kind of lacked since the L'Oreal one, like my other ones have been a bit more natural, a bit more everyday. I still happily wear this every day, but it's definitely just a bit more defining than all my other ones. So thank you so much for giving me this. I will be repurchasing next time I'm back in Germany for sure. Now for lips, I have a few favorites. I have a nude lip favorite that I've been wearing in quite a few videos and it's from Illamasqua and it is their Slick Stick Lip that was very difficult to say, in the shade True. And this is just a pinky nude lip liner that doesn't budge. It's very waxy, but still very easy to draw on. And because it's retractable, you don't need a sharpener or anything like that. You can just twist it up, twist it down, really like that. So I just pop that all around the lips. And then I go in with the Illamasqua Matte Lipstick in Born, which is a really nice matte nude shade. MAC Myth I was really into back in the day, but this is like the more pinkier, the more brownie, just slightly more natural looking matte. Sometimes I like a matte nude lipstick. I just put this all on over the top of the lip liner and then sometimes I go back in with the lip liner as well. Like, this must be how it feels to be Kylie Jenner and go back over just to add a bit more pink into things. But this is a really nice nude lip combination. But what I've got on my lips today is a mixture of two liquid lipsticks. Now I've been watching a lot of the US beauty girls this month and they all are massively into the Anastasia what they called like liquid matte liquid lipsticks they look incredible and I'm like oh god man I just want them I think Anastasia Beverly Hills does ship to the UK but I don't know what shade to pick because they all just look so nice if anyone has any recommendations for kind of like a dark vampy like autumnal lip then let me know because I think I'm gonna have to make an order but for the meantime I've been making do with what I've got and just mixing two different shades of the Kat Von D Everlasting liquid lipsticks and I use the shade Outlaw and then the shade Love LUV and I just pop kind of three splodges on the back of my hand and then I use the Dofa applicator of love to like mix them and just apply it on and that's what I've got today because on its own I really like the shade love I think it is incredible but I'm not really brave enough to wear it kind of on an everyday basis and just mixing it with a red creates like a little kind of berry like dark purpley look which I really really enjoy another thing that I picked up because of the Jaclyn Hill effect is the Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. Now she is obsessed with this stuff. She absolutely loves it. She like douses herself in this. And I was just like, man, I, I, I need that. A lot of my fixing sprays tend to be more like setting sprays over a spray that just adds 
kind of luminosity to the skin and boy does this add luminosity to the skin. The first time I used it I did like Jacqueline does and just kind of sprayed like what 10 sprays all over my face and I was like whoa this this is this is like intense intense stuff. Now I just tend to either do like two sprays at the end of my makeup kind of on one side of the face and then the other side of the face or I spray it onto the end of a beauty blender and then just dab it kind of where I want on the high points of the face because this on me is like liquid highlighter, like your face just glows. It's kind of incredible, I really really like it. It very much is a liquid moisturiser and if you've got quite dry skin I think you will be a huge fan of this. I don't find that it interferes with my makeup at all, it just adds glow and it never kind of dries down, it just stays there just like every time you move your face you're like Yes. My final favourite of the month is a nail polish and I picked this up when Lily came to visit me in Brighton and we did a spot of shopping the day after. We went into Space NK and I saw this. It's from a brand called Smith & Colt and I'd seen them on people's blogs. I'd seen them, I think they've been launched in America for quite a while. How cute is the bottle? They just look so adorable. And I saw this shade called Doe My Dear. One of the girls in Space NK had this on her nails and I actually think I might prefer it to Nails Inc. Poor Chester Square. I know, hold the phone, hold the phone. That has been my favourite for years and years and years. But this just goes on so well and I'm kind of convinced that they've changed the colour of Poor Chester Square since they've launched it in the new packaging. And this reminds me of the old Poor Chester Square. It's a little bit more lilac-y, a little bit more grey. It paints on beautifully in just two coats. I haven't actually got it on my nails today but I'll insert a picture of what it looks like here. I just think the formula is lovely. You just take off the top and then underneath there's like a little tiny brush which is very easy to kind of hold and manipulate. So that concludes my favourites for the month of September. I hope you had an amazing month and bring on October. I'm ready for it. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you on Wednesday with a brand new video. Bye!